This deck came in second place at an online tournament that ran over 250 players in at the late night number 74 Northeast Division. This deck, piloted by Tomo 1713, made it all the way through the gauntlet to second place. Mu V Max proving to be such a powerhouse here in the meta still after its release way, way back in Fusion Strike. It's still coming up strong. So we're going to take a look at the deck list, go through some of the matchups, and even show you some gameplay with the deck here in the video. As always, make sure you're hitting the like button and subscribe if you like all the content here. That way it lets us and our creators know how we're doing. And also make sure you're checking the description down below for all of our sponsors and other cool affiliates of the Shuffle Squad. Let's hop over to the deck profile and take a look. All right, at first glance, it looks like a pretty basic double turbo energy version of the Mew VMAX deck. Now we're running a thicker line, which I say thicker, but it's a pretty standard line of the Mew VMAX, a 4-3 line. Then we have a 4 of Genesect and the 1 of Oricorio. I have seen a few deck lists remove the Oricorio, but I really do think that it's beneficial, which you'll actually see in the gameplay towards the end of this video too. Now there are three judges here. I know that that's heavily popularized by the full grip group for the Judgment Day Mew. Uh, I really like that. And I mean, the deck at its core is actually created, I think, by Michael Pramowat, which is, again, one of the best players in the world. Uh, so really, really cool deck to see how it's been adapted. We see two bosses orders in here. We see one of the Roxanne, really for just the disruption aspect of what you see in front of you. And then we have the four power tablets able to creep towards that one hit KO. We have four cross switchers. Now I've seen cross switchers come in and out of the deck profiles as we've migrated to this version of Mew. I, I see a lot of people just taking the cross switchers out to make room for other things, maybe some more boss, maybe some more uh, switch outs, things like that. But I, I really do like cross switchers. The more and more I think about it, uh, I even wouldn't hate to see a Pokestop put in this deck so you can draw into those cross switchers. Now, 444 four, four of all of your search items here for the quick ball, ultra ball, and battle VIP pass, and then a four of Cramomatic. I have seen some people actually go down to three Cramomatic um, because you don't necessarily need it all the time, but I do find it useful in a deck that is playing the cross switchers again. Now we do have three of Lost Vacuums, really great for all kinds of things, uh, for removing damage modifiers, for just getting those Path to the Peak out of the way when you really need your abilities from Genesect V. So really heavy count of the Lost Vacuum is great here. Lower count of the Switch. So obviously we're playing Cross Switchers, but now we're only playing Switch cards in a count of two. Um, so I don't know how much that affects the deck here, but still obviously seem to work out great for this player. Running two of the four of Seal Stone, uh, great on a Genesect or just a Mew V. That way you can go ahead and search for things inside your deck that you need at a pivotal turn within the game. Moving over to the tool cards here, we have two of the Choice Belts and one of the Big Parasol. Big Parasol obviously uh, stopping the attack from the Amazing Rare Evil Tall, but also able to stop damage to your active and bench Pokemon from something like a Sableye uh, to just clean up and get you ready for maybe a bigger knockout later on in the game. So Big Parasol, I can definitely see pulling its weight in a deck like this. Then we have two of Path of the Peak when you do want to disrupt your opponent's hand and then just put a path in play to knock off those abilities crystal cave is kind of cool here it looks like obviously this deck profile is teching heavily against the lost zone boxes where if your genesex are getting some sableye spread damage put on them you can crystal cave that away uh, in combination with a switch cart too is really good to just pop off some damage when needed then we have a Collapse Stadium, pretty good in the Reggie matchup, I think. That's the biggest play here for uh, Collapse Stadium. But I really 
prefer the Lost City instead of Collapse Stadium, but I can see, you know, if you're putting a Mew because you have a heavier count on the bench after it's been damaged, you can just Collapse Stadium it away. Uh, but with no Silene, I don't know how good that card fits. I feel like that may have been a 59th card. Uh, and then the four count of energy standard in this type of build here of the double turbo energy. So you're just able to slap it on and attack, being as you are taking a backseat in opposition to something like a fusion strike build where they can't attack on the first turn of the game you will have to evolve your mu v into a v max in order to attack and then just finding the one energy card seems really really good here and uh, you're able to just keep switching your mu v maxes in and out of the active spot so you never run out of your techno blast all right, we're going to take a look at the matchup spread for how this deck did in late night 74. We're going to go over to the phase one of Swiss, and it looks like they battled a couple of mirror matches, not only in round one, but also in round nine and did win. So that's really cool to see that come through. And the, the power of this player piloting the deck is really, really great to see as the mirror match was pretty easy for them. So they're able to navigate that pretty well. Probably drew pretty hot too, I'm assuming. Uh, did take out a couple of our friends here. Uh, looks like Luke Morsa uh, playing the Lost Zone box uh, did take a win against them. And then our buddy Cash over there for Pokestats did take a loss. The only loss in Swiss actually to Cash here playing Lugia Archaeops uh, did again beat two of the Arceus Pikachu decks. Then we see the Gudra Lost Zone, another Lost Zone it was able to overcome, and then the Giratina. Obviously, Giratina is great in the next format, so people are trying it out now to kind of get their feet wet with the deck, but it doesn't look like it did so well against Mew. If you were paying attention to any of the recent uh, Asian tournaments, it seems as though that Mew was able to dominate over a Giratina meta in one of the championships over there as well. Now, moving into Swiss phase two, it looks like it was able to dominate every single matchup. So uh, we had a ditto box in here, ditto control. Then we had a Mew deck. Again, the mirror seems to be really easy for this deck. We do see a couple of the Lugias being taken out and then Arc Dura, they were able to just offer an ID or a tie and they went right into top cut after that. So really really good decision to id here to make it into top cut and it seems to work out well they did make it to the finals so in finals we'll take a look there at the matchups we have the mu again a mirror match that was won every single mirror match in this entirety of the tournament was won uh reggie gigas uh reggie gigas it looks like it did take a win which hey maybe that collapse stadium did work out you can go back and watch the finals matches on our channel here too if you wanted to catch that but it looks really good then we have the arc dura at the end that they did id with matt able to take the win over the mew uh probably weren't able to power through enough to get those paths in play and just hit into the duraladon uh very unfortunate here in the top cut to take that loss to the arc dura which is normally a pretty decent matchup even though mew only plays special energies uh the arc dura can't necessarily do too much against a path to the peak but if they're playing a heavier stadium count and you can probably get around that and still swing enough damage maybe into genesex because you're playing a higher count of boss in there so we're going to hop over and take a look at some gameplay from my end and see how the deck actually functions when you're playing it on ladder all right let's pop into the ladder here and see if we can get some games going with this mu deck see how powerful it actually is um, i'm excited to see uh, how the non-fusion strike build plays out i haven't played this version in quite some time with all dte um, so it's going to be a trip for me for sure all right we did lose the coin flip and we do have to evolve so a little bit behind but that gives us some time to set up our board state in a really good way so we'll just play to our outs at this point right now let's see all right running an Arceus deck. So I'm interested to see what type of Arceus deck. Uh, we do have the Battle VIP in hand. We have an Ultra Ball to thin some things out of the deck. We have Energy, uh, so we can definitely place Energy down this turn. Chances are they're not going to path to the peak us, but we definitely want to 
get as many Genesects into play. We could thin out our item cards here, uh, depending on what our top deck is, obviously, but to utilize not only Battle VIP, but also the Ultra Ball, since we do have Mew VMAX in hand. Um, yeah, since we have Mew VMAX in hand, and they have the Path. Okay, so that's not what you want to see here, I'm sure. But we're going to just go in as far as we can go. Because there's a chance that we can draw into something. So we're just going to get rid of this. Um, they will be able to smack us for at least 200 damage. So I don't want to use Switching Cart just yet. But let's see what our other resources are first we didn't check it with battle vip pass so that is a bad on me we do have four cram so that's really good we do have two non-path stadiums in the deck and we also have our three lost vacuum so we have a lot of outs here uh, we still have switching options they're most likely going to blow us up this turn so getting another genesect on the field being as we'll have three mu v max in play not bad uh, and we get to throw a judge out too so judge is just fine with me okay um you know what let's get rid of this path here and then go in with an oracorio it's going to make it a little tougher to knock out our pokemon um, but let's see yeah we'll, we'll just put the other mew down just in case they get some sort of crazy boss double turbo energy shenanigans going on they are going to swing for 180 so we definitely didn't want to put the mew up without securing an oracorio and they do put the big charm on so kind of interested to see what they're going to be doing here if we can just top deck something crazy out of the deck that's fine or if we get marnied that could be fine too I'm assuming that they are expecting us to uh, to do something insane. So chances are they're going to get a Drizzile here and try to research this hand away, get their Arceus, and go all in. They'll just smack us for 110 damage here. So Power Edge just doing 110 it's not every day you see an arc intel but the problem is that if they do evolve we really have to hit everything to knock this out and we could definitely do that uh, mew has the ability to just run hot and if you're running hot like that you can just knock out a v-star super quick even with the big charm so we have to think that it's going to be 310 we have to hit all of our damage modifiers next turn plus get rid of that path to the peak so melanie that's another interesting supporter uh in this situation here okay we see that coming down there's a quick ball they still have path it's, they're getting a sobble so they can load up if they want to or they can just hit us for that 90 damage okay so not a lot of energies i do see an out we could boss stall here for a second and we could put drizzile up they don't have a whole lot of energies in deck now that they're starting to load up this arceus and it prevents this genesect from living or from dying rather uh the next turn so there we go they're probably going to get a scoop up net and still knock out our genesect we can in turn put the uh the mew into play they could get an inteleon and do a couple of crazy inteleon plays here getting rid of that path there's the evil incense and that's assuming what they're going to go for here they'll get something to bump the path then they'll get their arceus and then arceus can use starbirth starbirth can get the scoop up net but they could scoop up net and then go into double inteleon here so lots of options for our opponent it's really just sitting behind our pokemon letting them get hit a little bit um and going from there so again they're gonna hit us the <laughs> collapse stadium all right so they're gonna hit us for 
a little bit of damage. We can get rid of this Mew here, I think. I think Mew is probably the best option um, because we want to keep our Genesex in play. Let's get rid of this Mew. Now they can Starbirth and get a boss's orders and try to boss up the Mew, but the Oracorio, not discarding that, really just stops him from hitting us one time and knocking them out. And we'll see, see what our opponent does. I'm interested to see what they're going to pull off. They're going to have only the two cards in hand. They can obviously knock out the Genesect here and keep swinging but with oracorio in play it really just saves us i have seen some new builds like this that don't play any oracorio oh, wow all right so we're gonna just get tanked for the remainder of the game so we'll put the free retreater in mew up front hopefully we can draw some things now that we do have access to the okay well that was almost a perfect top deck let's draw some cards now with fusion strike system Okay, we have one damage modifier there. I hate to lose the second energy, but I think we're just going to have to dig a little bit deeper. Maybe we'll draw into some sort of ball search. I don't want to take the chance of them getting a scoop up net, so I am going to just cross fusion strike and do a techno blast. And then hopefully they don't have it. All right, so 200 damage there. We have to retreat, tank a hit, go back up, and then hit them again. So even if we did something like the uh, the Psychic Leap attack to go back into the deck because we're going to have some damage on us, and they're most likely going to swing with their Arceus afterwards. There's the Sharon's Care. Um, they can still hit us, and I kind of expected that. That's why we weren't playing the power tablet here too um, just because I know that they're going to eventually run out of Sharon's cares so can we win this matchup is the question we would have to oh wow they just it just didn't happen for them huh okay well, let's throw a power tablet and let's do a fusion strike system we will judge all of their energies away. And we'll also judge our terrible hand. Okay. Hmm. Almost thinking... Let's get rid of this first. Okay. Let's get rid of the Ultra Ball. Do get the Ultra Ball. All right, let's swing for the fences here. Hmm. All right, let's get of our get rid of our energy to get rid of this. Go ahead. Star alchemy. We just need more draw support. So let's just get this now oh we need we need to switch out that's right and we'll switch back into mew and then just hit with techno blast and we knock out the arceus after the judge man this deck is insane <laughs> all right they didn't know what to do that was fantastic so that was it here folks 
I am going to go ahead and let you figure everything out in the comments and let us know how we did in this deck profile or what you'd like to see in these late night deck profiles. Uh, again, leave it down in the comments. Always hit subscribe if you want to see more content here from the Shuffle Squad. Hit the like button if you like this video to let us know how we're doing. And again, we're going to roll it back over to our sponsors so you can see all of the cool items that the TSS family has to offer to you. And you can check all those links out in the description as well. This is PJ signing off here for the Shuffle Squad. We'll catch you all next time. The Shuffle Squad is proudly sponsored by Atlas Collectibles, the best place to buy any trading card game product online. Visit atlastcg.com and at the checkout screen make sure to use code TSS12 to save an unbeatable 12% off your entire order. Atlas Collectibles will ship your product anywhere in the world, so make sure you're taking advantage of the 12% savings with TSS 12. And if Pokemon is not your thing, don't worry. Go to atlastcg.com and see all the other amazing trading card game products they have there to offer. The Shuffle Squad is partnered with PTCGO Store to provide our community with the best access to Pokemon TCG codes. They have codes available 24 seven, instant email delivery, and you can save 5% off by using code TSS5. If you're a YouTube member or Patreon supporter, you'll have access to a special code that gets you 10% off. So what are you waiting for? Use code TSS5 today and save 5% on your next order of codes on any codes available at ptcgostore.com. Are you trying to be the best like no one ever was? Now is your time. Head on over to metafy.gg and search out all our amazing Pokemon TCG coaches where you can book all sorts of training plans ranging from deck help to full season sessions with your favorite coach. What a great way to up your game. Check out metafy.gg in the description below and take your game to the next level. Challenge yourself against trainers from around the world to compete for the biggest online prizing yet. Are you ready for an unbelievable tournament unlike anything else you've ever seen before? The Shuffle Squad is proud to announce our newest tournament series, The Late Night Event, with an amazing grand prize that's bound to have you excited. Players can compete via play.limitless.tcg.com's online tournament platform every Tuesday to get a chance to earn weekly prizes and every week, your placement in the tournament is tallied by points based on your best finishes to earn your rank for the late night invitational event. The series will be conducted starting February 7th of 2023 and carry all the way through to the Invitational on July 9th of 2023, where the top players will be rewarded the grand prizing. And the grand prize is a signed jersey and photo op with the entire Shuffle Squad, as well as a fully paid trip to the Pokemon World Championships in Yokohama, Japan. This includes hotel and airfare, whether you're a player or a spectator. Don't forget to check out all the live coverage on our YouTube and Twitch channel of the top cuts of these events for every week. And subscribe so you can get notified where to watch the Late Night Events Invitational brought to you by the Shuffle Squad. Now get out there and start winning. We'll see you in Japan.